Welcome to your lesson on Chapter 6, Inheritance. You can define your own classes from which other classes can inherit. A base class can also be called a super or a parent class. So when you create a base class and then you create another class, the other class can inherit the data members that are defined with private access modifiers, the constructors that are defined with public access modifiers, and properties that are going to offer public access to those data fields. When you create a base class, you're creating the class, you're giving it a name, and then you give it a bunch of things that are data members. So your variables that you define within this class are your data members. Now class members defined with private access are restricted to the members of the current class. So in other words, if you create another class and you've labeled them as private, you won't be able to see it. Data members are defined with private access modifier and a private access enables the class to protect its data and only allow the access to the data through its methods or properties. Now constructors will use a public access modifier because if they're not public, you're not going to be able to instantiate any objects from the class and the other classes. The constructors are also methods, so named the same name as a class and there is no return type. And also if it's set at public, then you can pull it from a different class as well. So when you're creating the base class for inheritance, we have public person. There's zero arguments in that constructor. That's a continued definition for a person class. So a constructor with four different arguments is right below. Public person, string ID, string L name, string F name, and int N age. Now notice that the constructor as a method has the same name as the class, which is person. It has no return type and it is overloaded, meaning that it can be used for more than one thing. The access modifiers tell you basically what can get to it and what can't. So properties offer public access to data fields. The reason is because if they don't offer the public access, will you be able to get to it? Will you be able to see it when you need to? So properties that look like the data fields, but they're implemented as methods. The properties provide the getters, accessors, and the setters, which are the mutators, for the class. They make the properties read only by not defining that particular set. So properties are often named the same name as their associated data member, except property uses Pascal case, which means it's going to start with a capital letter. If you look at this example, public string last name get return last name or set last name and then put a value. Remember if you're getting, you're just reading that information and if you're setting, then you're actually setting a value. So the last name is considered a private data member. So you could create a class, everybody has last names, but maybe it's all the last names of people in one department and all the last names of people in a different department. And so you could create a class even called last name and then copy it to the different departments because most of your private data member stuff is going to be the same. So the properties are defined with public access. So they provide access to private data. There's no need to declare the value. It's just used. It's almost like magic. It refers to the value that's sent through the assignment statement. And remember, the get, set, and value are contextual keywords. You can't override methods. And basically what that's saying is you're using the method for more than one thing, and that's called an override. In C Sharp, we need to use that override keyword. So here's the person class example that has two additional methods. Public override string to string. Now that's defined in the person or public virtual int get sleep amount that also can be defined in the person. You can replace a method defined at a higher level with a new definition. You would use the keyword override in method heading in derive class to provide a new definition. In order to be a method that can be overridden, keywords virtual, abstract, 
or override must be a part of the heading for the parent class. In other words, it must be a part of the initial words, public override string, that's where override is, or public virtual int, that's where int is. So overriding methods really is just a feature that allows you to invoke functions that have the same signatures that belong to different classes in the same hierarchy of the inheritance using the base class as a reference. Should override the object to string method? That's a good one that, that works well with overrides. So public virtual string to string, that's how we, we do it with the public virtual keyword. Uh, the person class example overrides to string is public override string to string. Of course, that's defined in person. And then here, because we're using the override keyword, we want to make sure to do a return first name plus put a space in there plus the last name. So when you use the virtual keyword, that is implies that any class can override it. The to string method can have many different definitions. So Check out polymorphism in your book. This is an example of polymorphism. Overriding differs from overloading a method. You've got overriding methods that have exactly the same signature, or you have overloaded methods that have a different signature. Okay, so that's it for this week. We'll chat at you next week. I hope all is good. And if you need anything or if you need any help, please make sure you post it in the discussion board. Have a great week.